Today on Shop Nation, we answer the where the hell did I put the rag question and put them all in one spot. What's up and welcome. I'm Travis with Shop Nation and in today's pursuit of shop greatness, I'm going to address the mess. Now there are lots of situations in a shop where you need something to clean up a mess, whether you're staining, finishing, gluing, painting, or all of the above. And I've always found it hard to figure out a central place to put all this stuff that makes it easy to get to. Because I don't know about you, but anytime I need one of these, my hands are covered in something that I can't get to where the rags are. So in today's video, I want to address that by consolidating all of this into one location that's easy to get to, that I don't have to open a door or a drawer to access. So I've drawn up a pretty simple plan for a cabinet that's gonna mount on the wall that's gonna be made of primarily half inch plywood. Now I'm trying to use as much scrap as I can around the shop and I think this is a great project if you have a lot of scrap laying around your shop as well. Now you can easily modify the design for three quarter inch plywood if you happen to have way more of that on hand. So step one is to find enough half inch plywood to make all of the pieces. This project only requires about a quarter sheet of plywood, so this will work perfect. I could bore you with a typical table saw montage to cut these down, but I think instead, I'm just gonna karate chop them. Boom, way faster and no need for dust collection. Okay, so here's the actual cut sheet showing part dimensions if you wanna use a table saw. So to start, we'll need the back plate and the two side pieces. Here I'm using my T-roll to draw a line three quarters of an inch from the back edge to act as a nail reference line. Then using some half inch plywood pieces to raise the back panel up for the correct spacing. Make sure your pieces are square-ish and follow up with the glue with some brads. Then just rinse and repeat for the other side. Next, measure in four and a half inches from what will be the bottom of the cabinet. Then transfer a straight line. Make sure to do that on both inside edges. Next, add some glue to the bottom shelf piece and install using those lines as a reference. Each of the chutes in the main compartment are five inches apart, so the dividers are spaced accordingly. Again, take the time to make some nail reference marks ahead of time. You'll be glad you did. Definitely make sure to get the biters on the correct side of the line, leaving you the same 5 inch gap between all three compartments. Wipe the excess glue with the rag you probably had to dig through a cabinet to find. So next up is to lay out the sight glass slots. There are two that are three inches from each side, one in the center, and the end of each line is two and a half inches from the top and bottom. Now punch out those center marks with a half inch drill bit. I'm using a brad point bit to make this a little bit easier. It's probably worth mentioning here that a backer board underneath this piece would help prevent blowout on the back side. Now connect each set of holes to create the three slots. I chose to use a jigsaw here to finish it out, but you could easily use a router as well. Finally, cleaning up the edges with a chamfer bit, because why not? Now this next part is optional, but I've chose to make these little 45 degree ramps to help force the rags forward at the bottom of each chute. Now 
Now it's time to install the front face of the cabinet. With the cabinet flipped over, I can install the French cleat by which the cabinet will be hung. I've really come to like this method because it's simple and effective. With the top just sitting in place for now, I whipped up a quick glove box holder for the side. Now you can definitely go much simpler than I did here, or heck, even buy one off the shelf. I tend to use Harbor Freight gloves a lot throughout my shop, so this is actually built specific for that box size. Alright, so now with most of the construction complete, it's now time to prep and paint the cabinet. Ugh, freaking finishing. Starting with wood filler and then finishing with sanding should get these parts ready for paint. I forgot to mount the glove box holder, so I knocked that out real quick with a couple of countersunk screws. Now instead of doing what I normally do, which is clear out a section of my garage and put up a bunch of drop cloths, I'm going to try out a new product, which is basically a pop-up paint booth. Now for painting, I'm still going to use the airless tank sprayer, which I've shown in other videos. I'll link that below as well as anything else I'm using in this video. But I really think this pop-up paint booth is going to make painting things more approachable and a lot easier. Let's uh, give it a shot. So it's basically a tent and it goes together like a tent. But I like it. No, no, I'm not a professional painter. I get asked that never. But I'm telling you, this airless paint sprayer does make painting pretty fast and easy. All right, so we now have the parts painted. Last step is to add some last minute details, put it all together, fill it up, try it out. All right, so for these little window things here to look into each slot, I'm gonna use some really thin acrylic. I'm gonna cut this into strips and then I'm gonna glue it behind so that the rags don't come out of the holes. To mount the top access door, I'm just using a standard piano hinge. This one happens to be 12 inches long. You could definitely just use two regular hinges. I just kind of like the stability that a piano hinge gives on a door like that. For the mounting of the paper towel holder below, I chose to use some 3D printed parts to help me out. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, that's okay. You could easily make this out of wood or other materials. So for the mounts or cradles on each side that hold the dowel, which in turn hold the paper towels, I modeled up these little mirror image parts in Fusion 360 and then 3D printed them on my Mark Forged 3D printer. Now I know I just did a video on the Prusa 3D printer and I could have easily used it for this. I just happened to have material loaded in the Mark Forged. It was ready to go. So I just chose to use that. So basically the dowel enters here and then falls into the slot. And then as you're pulling paper towels, it won't come up and out of there. Now, because the dimensions of the paper towel roll and the cabinet itself are different, I had to print some spacers as well. So each of these spacers will go on either side of the paper towel roll to kind of make up that space. Home stretch now, just hanging the mounting cleat on the wall before hanging up the cabinet itself.
Okay, that's a wrap on the ultimate shop rag dispenser. That's a terrible name for it. I gotta think of something better. If you saw anything in the video that you liked or you want more information about, I will link it down below. Please use those links, it helps the channel. I appreciate it. From me to you, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a big ol' thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, this is what we do, we make shop projects. If you're interested in pursuing shop greatness, hit the subscribe button and you will get future updates. I'd really like to know what you thought about the project, so if you have any suggestions or any things that maybe I should have done a little bit differently, please leave those in the comments below. And for the subscriber update, as of shooting this video today, whatever time it is, 41,671 subscribers. <laughs> Stick around for more Shop Nation videos. If not, we'll see you on the next project where we will continue to pursue shop greatness.